Hello, everybody. This is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. Um, here we are. It is, uh, whoa. Let's spin around. This reverse F5 mode is confusing. Um, look where I am. I'm in an ocean monument. And guess what? There's no water. Um, I had a video that I was going to show you. And, uh, and I record, oh, nice little transparency glitch. I recorded it quite a while ago. Um, in fact, I recorded it almost a month ago. I've been away, busy with life. And it is, uh, I'm glad to be back recording. I haven't recorded anything in a while. Had a busy holidays. Hope your holidays were good. And hope you had a good new year. It is now 2015. Uh, you probably won't see this video for um, probably until until later in 2015 because I'm way behind and I just I'm not uh, I'm not being good about getting caught up. This is probably episode 13. Um, I say that because I had an episode 13 that was uh, that was full of frustration and horrible horrible horribleness and mostly it was me. Um, swearing at uh at minecraft well probably not minecraft per se but i was swearing mostly i think at my network connection yeah 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 um okay i've got all my armor on so this is uh an entrance to an ocean monument that i found and there's nearby a little island i built a portal to it turns out the portal well no what happened was i near the the uh, nether fortress I built a uh, I built a portal, just a random portal. See where it went, and oops, let's go over this way, and uh, and it led to a obsidian platform just above an island, or let me put it this way: it led to an obsidian platform just above an ocean monument. So it was an obsidian platform because it was over the water, uh, and there was an island nearby which I swam to and built a little. Uh, a little hut a little place to stage for an assault I came in and I spent about four days it took me four days to clear out this ocean monument mainly because uh, it was the first time I've done it and it was very frustrating because I was having horrible network issues yeah um, these things are rather maze-like on the inside. I've cut extra holes into these walls so that I can walk around a little more freely. I walked into this room here. This was like the first corner I could find. I blocked it off. I cleared it out using slime blocks. Slime blocks are very handy for dealing with an ocean monument because you can, you can remove them even with the mining fatigue, which is kind of cool. So I cleared out this room. I evacuated all the water, gave me and blocked off the door. Gave me a little base. I was able to put down a chest, a little brewing stand. Um, I had a little little place where I could keep some water in here. And it allowed me to sort of come in, recuperate, re-brew up some additional water breathing and night vision potions, which are very handy when dealing with an ocean monument. And I went through and I cleared out the entire inside using slime blocks, which is a little bit crazy. So this is the front entrance. And over here, not over here, oh, over here. So this was the big center room where the, the gold blocks were. They were inside here. I cleared it all out. I left up all of the sea lanterns because they give off nice light. It makes things easier to see. And I relocated the portal into here. It was close enough that I was able to do that. So now this takes me, um, takes me right in by the the nether fortress which is a bit of a hike from the main portal room but you know it works and as you can see i set up brewing stand uh, i punched a hole in the floor there's water below so i can refill bottles and uh put some nether wart you know just the just all the usual stuff i built a um a smelterator because it's convenient and 
uh, and I brought over some stuff. Now, from the island, what time is it? It's the middle of the day. From the island, I saw that there was a second ocean monument really close to this one. In fact, it's practically next door. So after I cleared this one out, I went over and cleared that one out. And then I built the tunnel. Hi, guys. Nana, nana, nana. Yeah, ha <laughs> Yeah, You can't get me. Um, this was a pain in the butt because these guys are jerks. They are really, really nasty jerks. Um, and I didn't realize at the time what this, what the, what the solution was. Hang on a second. Since we're here, let me go grab some more materials. Uh, this, uh, this underwater tunnel here, and I did, I was going to use glass for the floor, but I, I realized that you can't place rail cart or mine cart rails on glass. You can't place them on, on transparent blocks over here I have some sand a lot of sand there we go um, yeah so from here I can uh, bust a move on over here and I realized that uh, Working in the water near these guys, uh, invisibility potions are rather useful. So I started, uh, well, you can't really see it here because there's a giant wall of sand in the way. But once I get inside, you will see. There's a cavern down here or something. There's a zombie somewhere. I'm going to have to go find it and take care of him because that's a little frustrating. And I did dig out a little trench for this here. It goes from ground floor to ground floor in the two ocean monuments. And this one, I not only cleared out all the water, but I cleared out all the walls. So this is, this is what the inside of one of these things look like without any walls or rooms. Um, I did not find a sponge room in this one. So... I don't think, I think this is all, this is all dripping water. I think this is just ocean out here because these are the little wings. And I think the same goes true over here. And I don't think there's any rooms up here because this is the, the top of the wing sort of stair steps down. And then this is the, I've got it blocked off with slime so these guys don't hop their way in because they're actually more dangerous out of the water than they are in the water. Because for some reason they move, they seem to move more quickly and they definitely move more erratically when they're not in the water. Um, so this is the little cupola area. And uh, what I did was I made myself a little safety ladder area put up a little chest here let's dump off this stuff and I didn't bring any potions so I'll have to be careful about this but I started laying out arms to show the dimensions of the area I want to clear out because I want to make a guardian ah dang it see those guys are jerks um, I want to make a guardian farm because I discovered I like sea lanterns I like them a lot so, so let me go get some, uh, let me go get some supplies and I will be right back. All right. We're on our way back. Um, I made this walkway two blocks tall. I intend to put a mine cart in here to make it easier to go back and forth. I hope this is tall enough. The, the glass doesn't make it too claustrophobic. So I think it's probably okay. It seems okay to me now. Um, I haven't laid down the minecart because I want to put in some lighting. And I want to use sea lanterns to do it. And I also am not quite sure what I'm going to do at this end. Because this thing isn't going to go all the way into the ocean monument here forever. I need to, when I get down to this end down here. 
So you see I've been dropping in sand to mark a perimeter. And obviously I need to do something with this down here, but um, I'll do that from underwater. So basically once it gets here or here, I need to build some sort of a staging area where I can put a, a bed and some storage and and supplies to work on tearing this thing down. I mean, as cool as this is, I don't, I don't, I, I want to turn this into a guardian farm. So, uh, cause I want to be able to get all the prismian crystals and blocks and whatnot. And I didn't realize, and I was watching an OMG Chad thing that these are, these are animated textures. So if you sit here and stare at it, it goes very slowly, but it kind of, Right now, it's a very yellow, greenish yellow looking block, but if you give it a little time, it'll turn really purple and it turns really, it gets a little more blue and it's a, it's a pretty cool, hey. That sounds like what I've got in here. Okay. So, to clear it out, I'm going to use I'm going to use the sponges that I have. I don't have a ton of sponges. I have 35. Uh, I did not find in this in this one here. I did not find. Oops, that was interesting. Uh, I didn't find a uh, a sponge room. So all I have are the sponges from the Elder Guardians and from the uh, from the first sponge room. Which is a little weird okay so no, I don't need that and I don't need these because it doesn't matter what time it's gonna be I don't really need I'm gonna keep those just in case so potion of invisibility and we are gonna grab these I'm gonna fill up our inventory with this and we are going to go at it so I'm wearing my helmet which has aqua affinity and respiration on it just in case I fall in the water and have to swim and my uh, depth strider just in case I fall in the water and have to swim uh, so wearing two pieces of armor means the uh, means I look funny um, but it, it means that they can see me if they get within like something like three blocks I think I think the uh, the number of armor icons there shows you how far away they can see you. So now I am invisible, or mostly invisible. So I can come up here and these guys won't, uh, they won't be jerks. Or they won't be as much jerks. Which is good. So we're going to come out here. Ooh, you can see the walkway. And the ocean monument is just out of view over there. The other ocean monument. I'm calling my aqua base. I don't know if it's a good term or not. So I'm going through and I'm just uh, coming and I, I'm dropping a perimeter right now. Um, which is slow and tedious. But I'll just show you the process here. And, and then I'm going to drop in dividers. What's going on? Why am I not light clicking? There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to drop in dividers. and use sponges to clear out the water inside the dividers and based on what I saw Doc M was showing a video of some of this work and he said that keeping the, the dividers three what is going on there three blocks wide you know three blocks apart seemed to work best for him I'll experiment with that that's going to be really tedious oh you're shooting a squid okay he doesn't see me he sees the squid. Um, and I figured I was going to use gravel because I used up all my glass, all my sand to make the glass for that. I don't have a ton of sand. Uh, there is a desert where, where, you know, I go when I need sand. And there's a big sand mountain there that, you know, we, we've started tearing down. Um, so I was planning on using gravel because it's otherwise mostly useless. I mean, it's it, I like I like it for making coarse dirt, 
as whatever that's worth um, and and I like uh, you know I like using it as a texture for walkways and whatnot one more right one more yeah one more um, so I like making it using it as a texture for walkways but there's plenty of gravel in the world and and I have a fair amount from digging out my basement but I don't have that much so I was I was going around looking for more gravel and the sea the sea floor around here is pretty filled with gravel and so I was thinking I was going to do some underwater gravel collection and uh we lined up here now no i don't think so is that right that can't be right i don't know okay doesn't matter so and uh so vex very very thoughtfully went out and uh collected a whole mess of, of uh, sand for me he went out to the to the desert fortress not desert the desert temple and uh he collected a, he collected like four double chests worth of sand for me which should let me build the the uh uh is that guy gonna see me no um it should let me build the perimeter here and then I, and it may get me started on the dividers but i need two walls worth of dividers so i think i'm gonna need i was th figuring just over three come on oh i'm out that's why uh three double chests worth of sand or gravel am i doing this right yeah uh in order to to just do the perimeter and about a quarter that much so maybe another double chest worth so for each each divider I need two of those so both sand and gravel are useful and uh, because they they have gravity let me swap this out just in case here So anyway, you can see there's nothing too difficult here. With the invisibility potions, it goes pretty well. And now that I've uh, started eating, come on, golden carrots as food, which seems obnoxious, but it's uh, they're actually a really good food source. Come on, what is going on here? Oh, well, duh. Oh, shoot, shoot. They do still occasionally get close enough to see you, and then and then they zap you. But you can usually spot it ahead of time and get away. Oh, come on. The batteries in my trackpad are dying here. Anyway, so that's uh, so that's what I've been working on out here. The second, the second ocean monument went much quicker to clear out than the first, partly because I had a better network connection at the time. Uh, my network connection was really, really, really awful for the first one, and that's a large part of why it took me four days to clear out. It was very frustrating, and I had a lot of trouble finding one of the gar one of the elder guardians. That was very frustrating. Um, and then, let's see here. Uh, yeah, uh, so that was that was kind of annoying. So now, oh yes. So on the second one, I I had the. I had the sponges, which helped tremendously because I was able to 
walk or swim into small rooms and clear them out automatically, you know, clear them out immediately, which made it a lot easier than having to fill up the entire room with uh, with slime blocks, which I did on the first one. Uh, so still rains here. Anyway, um, so once I get the water evacuated out of the the spawning area, then I'm going to tear down the ocean monument. And you've probably seen other people do guardian farms. It's not too difficult. You basically build uh, a grid of water up top, an area for the guardians to spawn, and a uh, squid will also spawn in there. And then they will fall to their death because you dig out down below and give them plenty of space to fall and then some sort of a hopper minecart collection system to pick up all the prismarine, the prismarine crystals, or the, I guess shards and crystals, and they'll also drop fish and uh, the squids will drop ink sacks. So that's, uh, and then with those, with the shards and crystals, you can build Hmm. Sounds like one of them got in here. Let's see if he's inside. Sounds like he was right over here. Hmm. Okay. That was weird. Oh, why didn't I? I haven't dug out extra doorways through here. Anyway, so this is the. The ocean monument I got going on. Drop off the water bottle here. So let's let's go into the nether. And having trouble with the portals. Doing that crap. Oh goodness, that was bad. See the portals sometimes seem to drop you like down below next to the portal it should just drop you right onto the surface here and uh sometimes it does that that's not good because you could suffocate in a wall there okay uh, uh another fortress i believe you've seen so that's all that's over here let me go back to the central hub and show you what we got going on over there so this hallway is very long and uh, I kind of wish I don't want to put a rail in here because I understand that the pigmen can spawn on the rail track which isn't good uh, so then I may have to put like half slabs so your head goes to the half slabs it's kind of annoying uh, so I kind of wish there was a nether to the nether <laughs> space that you could quickly travel between points in the nether uh, let's see here gold farm I showed you that. About the risks place. Uh, this is new, but I'll come back over there. So I cleaned up the area around the portal here and enclosed it. Uh, so this this goes to Vex's castle, which I want to show you because there's some cool stuff going on there. Uh, this area, I don't know what to do with this. I've got a half slab, so nothing can spawn on here. And behind here, there was a um, metal had put in a carrot farm that, eh, not a bad idea, but um, it was taking a lot of room and zombie pigmen were spawning in it and he had put in a wooden door right here, which isn't good. So they banged on the door. No good. So down here we have the, uh, down to the right, we've got the desert temple and then we have the bone and iron farm and then the, uh, the stronghold which leads to the enderman farm but you've seen all that this is new so this uh this goes down to a couple other people's base and i finally connected this up so i had the the portal for reclaim uh i had that a while ago but i hadn't built the hallway to it so this goes to his place his underground slash underwater base which is kind of cool and then uh, Pete and Smash Smasher, this is their, uh, this goes to their place. 
uh, which is pretty cool. It's also underground. Their place is kind of cool. I'll do a little showcase of that once I get permission. And then I start digging down this way. I'm working on it. I'm going to go dig some more. This is going to lead to something cool. I found a really great witch hut. Um, it's, I don't believe it was generated before, so I think it's a 181 witch hut, which is nice. And it's out in the middle of a... It's in the swamp, of course. But it's surrounded by water. It's like in the middle of a big lake, which is kind of awesome. Uh, so, oh, hello. We have a visitor. Greetings. Enjoy the nether wart. Uh, so... Let's go. Let's go check out uh, Vex's place because he he's been he's been doing some work. Let's go do that. This is what he's been doing. <laughs> this is craziness. So he built these these statues, which were impressive enough, but this is out behind his place. This thing is insane. He got a beacon. Um, and so he, he started digging out. He removed, there was a mountain here. And so he built this. It's pretty cool. Ah. Nice uh, fireplace. Warm your toes by the fire. And uh, it's a library here. Oh, adding more books to the other side. A lot of dead cows going on here. Oh, he changed the carpet. This is nice. Nice. And he's been playing with these fountain designs. This is, these are really cool. I really like the way these turned out. So he's using the chisel blocks and the stairs to, to sort of make little faces. And they're... Uh, they come out here and they do their little thing. It's pretty cool. Hey, get out. So yeah, lots of dead cows. <laughs> Using stone bricks as scaffolding. Oh, must be nice. So yeah, this is this is pretty cool. And uh, so I came out and I should have recorded this, but I I came out and when he was still building this, I. I wrote a little book oops um <laughs> um notice the motion regulations to your certain amount it's come to our attention that a new structure is being constructed at this location while we appreciate the boost of the local economy our inspectors have identified several violations of also safety regulations which might must be remed oh remedied post haste in violation of the section 42.35 of the MMC, handrails are required for all accessible structures over four blocks in height. Um, yeah, so then uh, protecting closure for ladders. Uh, sky be beacon access intersects with hallways must be covered. Um, illumination of hall walls and uh, yeah. So anyway, I wrote a little book here and then I went and placed a uh, Really obnoxious. We'll rotate that back. Hey. Yeah, it'll work. Um, and I placed really obnoxious railings around stuff, safety railings, and then I covered the floor in slime because he had this thing, this this hole, this tower, goes all the way up to build limit, and then there's nothing to prevent you from just walking through the hole and falling all the way down to the floor. So, I, uh, I helped with that, and, uh, oh, that's pretty. So, yeah, you can see the mountain. He's got the, he moved the beacon back behind, but the beacon was down here, and it was, it came up through the stairway here, and there was a hole you could have fallen through. It was just a nightmare. So, so I helped him out with the safety. He's, he's been making improvements. He thought that was funny. He walked in, and was like, I've been slimed. Uh-oh. I accidentally looked at that Enderman. And these ladders for this access, this is all temporary, I'm sure, but it just comes up on top of the wall. 
and and this one here was particularly problematic I put slime like safety safety blocks down at the bottom of all these ladders and he's removed them all no jumping so from here you could jump off here and <laughs> jump down to the slime blocks that was pretty cool tried jumping from all the way up top but I ended up hitting this here and uh, killing myself so that was I didn't try that again so he's the chandelier looks awesome um, yeah the torches are suboptimal but this chandelier looks just great well, the fence post went into there but that that's just that's wonderful so anyway Oh, there's that Enderman. He seems to have forgot about me. I'll leave him alone. So this isn't super safe back here either, but he'll uh, he'll add a second floor when he gets through the library. So anyway, just want to show you that. That was pretty cool. And uh, relatively convenient access to the Nether through his portal here Let's see if I can hit the frame oh nice oh nice almost killed myself but that's okay so that's pretty cool um, I've showed you Tom's Tower of Lava his railway he terminated it I don't think I, I don't know if I mentioned that or not but He's got like a big mining area like where he's truly strip mining um, digging out just a gargantuan inverted uh, inverted pyramid in in the ground it's very impressive it's a ton of work and I keep I keep offering to uh, get him a beacon but he uh, he doesn't seem to be that interested so anyway not too much else going on in, in the nether here I said we've been having trouble with the uh, with the portals putting you out underground so sometimes you come into this portal and it drops you out into the uh, this room below And then it realizes that it made a mistake, I guess. And uh, and then puts you back up here most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't. It's very weird. Uh, I need to change that sign. So anyway, oh, you take a little bath. Very good. Hygiene is important. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for watching. It's been episode 13 of uh, Minecraft Land Party. I'm going to go and continue working on the uh, the Guardian Farm. Um, oh, you know what? Well, it's fine. There, I haven't made that much progress there, but we'll uh, we need to talk anyway. Um, this is going to be a long episode. That's okay. Ooh. let's go downstairs because I don't think I've shown you some of the progress there but not all of it so it's 2015 very happy that it's no longer 2014 2014 was kind of a rough year and I have a lot of friends who kind of say the same thing too my uh, my wife went through cancer treatment for breast cancer she's doing she's doing very well so we're very happy that we're past all that she's on an estrogen therapy that that uh, her particular type of cancer should is apparently responsive to um, so should be on that for 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 another five years uh, but she is cancer free which is nice and she is uh, uh, she's getting better she's feeling more energetic and feeling just better in general which is nice and uh, 
no longer doing any of the chemotherapy or radiation, which is, of course, awesome. So, so that's good. Um, I mean, it, it pretty much was our 2014, just getting through it. Um, I had a little flare-up of my MS toward the end of the year, which was not good. Um, and it kind of left me feeling quite cruddy for, uh, for quite a while before I managed to convince anyone that, that I was having a problem. Did an MRI and confirmed that I had another, another lesion on my brain. Um, I'm feeling better now, but, uh, did, you know, a week of, of hardcore intravenous steroids, which is, it's kind of a shame that that's the way they have to treat MS attacks, but it's what we have at the moment, and uh, they're really hard. Solumedrol is really hard on the system, and uh, so didn't sleep pretty much for a week. It was no good. Um, I think there's a slime chunk over there, but I haven't been able to confirm that. Anyway, so. Uh, I got in a car accident. My car was totaled. Um, so that, that was no good. I mean, I ended up getting a new car, which is great. I'm starting to hate that car, but you know, it sucks having to go through that. So anyway, um, 2014 was, was full of challenges. Uh, fortunately came through. Could have been, could have been a lot worse, but I prefer not to have to go through the stress and, and, uh, and difficulties because it's no fun uh, so so we're uh we're looking forward to 2015 we did over the holidays we spent time with family we went uh down to san diego to spend time with giselle's folks uh oh i'm showing you this little walkway i built down here um playing around i'm going to extend it over here um I wanted to build an underground village. So I got myself a couple of vill zombie villagers and I cured them and I built a building around them. And they're really squirrely. This door doesn't work. It, this isn't actually a village. And I think we're, act we're too close to the village that's up there. And I think they want to get it to it. So I think I may need to relocate this. But, um, so I want to I want to build a little village here. Uh, and I want to light it with pumpkins. So I built a little pumpkin farm. And uh, it's been working. It's not the highest efficiency or highest rate thing in the world. But it works. And it kind of, it's automatic. It kind of does its thing. I played around with a couple of other designs. Um, and this is, this is something I came up with. So it works pretty good. Relatively low resource. Occasionally, occasionally one of the slimes gets in and, and, and tramples the, uh, the pumpkin plant. Which is no good. But, you know, and sometimes the pumpkins, uh, when they, when they, show up they get pushed by this piston here so this is a bud switch pushes them off theoretically into this hopper and then into the chest um oh, there's a couple and uh, sometimes they just sit on the ground next to it and eventually if i don't if i don't happen to come by they will despawn so that's that kind of sucks but so i wanted to build these because i'm going to need a bunch of sugar cane for the guardian farm and uh, you might wonder how this what how that works so I'm going to take these and use them as jack-o-lanterns to build a sugar cane farm here and it's gonna be the same one I built in my single-player world I'm just gonna build it off in the corner here and I think I'll, I'll be able to fit two layers in here I think I'm gonna start it I'm going to leave a couple blocks here. I'm going to start it here, I think, and just build it there. I'm going to make it the, uh, it'll be like 31 or 32 blocks long and, you know, the usual, what are 15 blocks wide. And it'll sit here and it'll just generate sugarcane for me. 
and uh, my, I have the little tiny sugar cane uh, thing upstairs up at the up next to the village and that works but uh, it's small I mean it's basically this bud switch but connected to a bunch of, uh, of sugar cane plants that works um, and it's and it's productive it's surprisingly productive uh, but I don't uh, I want to get I want to get some real serious sugar cane going so and then I'll extend this walkway out over here and out this way and I may move their building over there and to get the villagers instead of bringing villagers down from upstairs I took a little corner uh, section in the corner there and removed all the lights so that mobs would spawn and then I waited until a couple of zombie villagers uh, spawned and it's actually there were three of them and I, I trapped them and, and tried to isolate them didn't work I ended up killing one accidentally but the so the uh, so then I cured them trapped them in little buildings and then I railed them over here um, but as I said I think this is too close to that village up there so they get really squirrely they just run around circles and I can't get them to breed for the life of me and I know you can breed villages underground I've seen it happen in other videos uh, but if they're unhappy and I know it's supposed to be like a village happiness thing um, but I I have a feeling they really want to be up there and uh, and so they I can't get them to breed so I'm hoping if I move them, maybe if I move them over to that side, they will definitely be too far away from the village. And I can give them some little doors on the inside to play around with and dig, build them some other rooms for them to run around in. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. And I, I like the design of the building. I was playing around with, with quartz. I don't have a ton of it, but... Um, and using glowstone as lighting, so nothing spawns in there. And it works. So anyway uh what was i saying oh yeah so we went for christmas we went down to san diego be with giselle's parents oh no so gravel coarse dirt cobblestone yeah in a semi sort of random pattern it's kind of nice and you put down some silk touch dirt or some silk touch grass and it spreads and it creates a nice little sort of uh country sort of look so I need to spread this out and then I need to figure out lighting here because I don't want to be using these things so I'm thinking maybe in ground lighting with leaves to cover I, I don't know I still have to play around with that then after um, after Christmas we drove up to the Bay Area to be with my parents for a few days uh, we had gone up there for Thanksgiving but my dad hasn't been doing so well he's he's uh he suffered a heart attack several years ago and he hasn't entirely recovered well and so he's he's in his in his kidneys have started to go so they've got him on dialysis like three times a week and it's and that's hard on him and he's not the most active in the in the world anyway which doesn't help so we went up there and we helped them with some stuff and just spent some time there. We need to we need to do that more often than we've been able to, especially in the last year when Giselle's been in treatment. Uh, so that was nice. And then it was Giselle's mom's birthday in early January. So we went uh, back down to San Diego for that. So that was... Uh, you're weird, Bowser. Um, so that was... So that was uh, a lot of driving, um, which was tiring. So what time is it? It's getting dark. It's a little dangerous to go to the village, but let me show you the sugarcane farm. So anyway, it's been, the last month has been very hectic. And uh, between just that and work. Oh. Oh. Ah. Okay. Huh. Got a few villagers over here. Iron, Iron Golem spawned inside the house here, which is pretty funny. He's trapped. I seem to be short a few villagers. Huh. Huh. 
I wonder if I had a zombie siege or something. I don't know. I need to spend more time on this village. Yeah, I'm short. I mean, I've got like five guys over here and three over there, but... Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. So that's that. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, yeah, see, I've got some sugar cane, but I'm going to need a lot more than that. Why isn't this sugar? Oh, because he needs to grow. We can force it. I haven't seen this thing in action in a while. Boom. See, a lot of it goes down into the hoppers. And a lot of it sits here and gets on the thing and despawns, which is going to happen, but it doesn't. It's a... Uh, doesn't need to happen as much as, as it does so I think my other other design is a little bit more um, a little bit more efficient so anyway oh yeah and then for uh, so we were down in San Diego for New Year's for Giselle's mom's birthday which worked out because it means uh, we were at a hotel down there that doesn't allow dogs so we had to send the dogs off to doggy uh, summer camp um which is a place up in in the desert up in I think lancaster where they they go and they come and pick them up and it's a farm and they've got horses and they've got cats and dogs and stuff it's they they seem to like it they'd like the guy who runs the place so that's all cool uh, so they they got to go and spend time there also meant that they didn't have to worry about the fireworks which go on around here at new year's eve which means we had kind of a quiet new year's Oh hey buddy, um, so that's so that that worked out, and then we got uh, and of course while they were there, they had a whole string of uh, of earthquakes in Castaic, which I'm sure the dogs just loved. Um, they were almost certainly close enough to have felt at least some of the earthquakes, so uh, we didn't hear any anything about them being too freaked out about it but I'm sure they felt some of them I need more puffer fish all right um, I think that's it oh well and one more thing oh whoa hello oh that'll be an interesting in the logs so uh, yeah I think that's pretty much all I have to show you. I still need to repair this map. We had a lightning strike. Took out two rows of maps. Which is... Oh, man. It's a bunch of iron. And the, for the compasses. So, uh, I have copies of the maps. But that's going to... It's just annoying. Um, let's go get some ice. So... We, uh, yeah, so New Year's came and very happy as I said that it's 2015. Oh, Risk. <laughs> Somebody gave Risk a bunch of arrows. That's very nice. Um, yeah, 2015. So we're very happy. It's a new year. We, uh, we got through 2014 alive, which is, I, I suppose, the minimum of what we could ask for, given all of the nonsense that's going on in the world, all the horrible stuff that that's happened, especially in the, the last couple of days. We had the the attack, the terrorist attack, or whatever you want to call it, in France, and and uh, I guess there's news today that Boko Haram. Uh, may have killed up to 2,000 people for whatever stupid reason uh, in Nigeria and of course the Nigerian government has no no ability to do anything about that which is very annoying so, so 
So with all the nonsense in the world, the Ukraine government and plane crashed, the Russians invading Ukraine and planes disappearing and crashing and uh, um, we're alive and we're healthy. And uh, that's, uh, I guess it's the minimum we could actually expect or hope for. Everything else is gravy. Um, and I realized, and I, mean, I guess I knew this anyway, but I realized that uh, life is short and lots of bad things can happen. And and I realized that uh, our little dogs, which we're just, we're, we're really blessed that we have these little creatures that decide they're, they're happy snuggling up with us every night. Um, um, they're not going to be with us forever and I'm not going to live forever. Giselle's not going to live forever. So I realized, and it just struck me in a very real way then we need to, uh, we need to cherish the time that we have with the ones we love because it's, they could all just go away with no warning. So, so I've been making a point of, of, uh, trying to remember to be grateful for the things that, uh, all the good things in my life every day, um, actively be grateful because it's so easy to take things for granted and I don't want to do that. So, so there you go. Um, it's me getting serious and a little bit teary, which is a little crazy, but, uh, one of the things I'm grateful for, I guess, is Minecraft. And I, I really like this game. I really like playing it. And I really like the sense of sense of, I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, sense of productivity, the sense of, um, control. I guess you can, you can control things in this game in a way that sometimes it's hard to do in real life. I mean, you couldn't, in real life, tear down a mountain and build a castle. I mean, you could if you were, like, a crazy rich millionaire. Or you had you were a king and you had, like, like thousands and thousands or millions of, of people who swore their loyalty to you and, and owed you their labor and the fruits of their, of their labor. Um, you could. But we can do that without having to exploit the the labor and hard work and freedom of those around us in this game. And I think that's pretty cool. And you get to make the world the way you want it. And this place, this this world, this server is every bit as much a real world as the world outside. Um it's just it's it's a little different <laughs> and the rules are a little different. So I don't know. I kind of like that. Um, so yeah, as the sun rises over the lava tower and the crazy castle of Vex, um, I'm grateful for Minecraft and I'm grateful for those of you who watch these videos and enjoy them. So, uh, thank you. And I will try to remember to not take that for granted every single day all right well thank you for watching and i will go work on work on projects and make stuff in minecraft because that's uh one of the things i really like doing and i will see you in the next episode all right bye